Hey, Niemann Hall. Happy World Water Day. Yay, big cheer. I think, and actually we have this kind of an extra treat here that we have a delegation of Chinese water experts. They were wandering around aimlessly in D.C. and they found us. So I think it's highly appropriate that we acknowledge the, the water group. Everyone wave wildly at them. Yay, water. Because actually, oh, I'm Jennifer Turner, and actually, because I am a passionate water person with China. In fact, a lot of you probably know, after coming to my meetings for years, that I did my dissertation on Chinese water policy implementation. Nothing sexy like pollution. I looked at water fees and water withdrawal permits, but it's very important stuff, okay? I got to know about what was happening at the local level. Um, so anyway, we're going to dive right into our meeting today. Okay, I'm going to do my best to make as many puns with water as possible today. Um, yeah, welcome. For those of you, there are many of you who are new. I wanted to let new folks know that the Woodrow Wilson Center has been around since 1968 when it was founded by Congress as a memorial to um, President Woodrow Wilson, who was both a, a scholar and a policymaker. In his spirit, we have about 20 projects and programs here that focus on foreign policy issues, and we, try, we, we pride ourselves on being a nonpartisan, non-advocacy forum for these issues. Now, the China Environment Forum, we're not, we're not, we're not even quite a teenager yet. Um, we're only, uh, oh no, wait, wait, let me think hard. We're going on, um, oh, going on 13 years this year, so we are officially, I guess, in puberty. Um, <laughs> we're, we've been, um, uh, for 10 years, almost 11, I've been putting on meetings, putting up publications that um, focus on Chinese energy and environmental challenges and um, bringing in Chinese government, NGO researchers. And as you can tell today, I have a, a lot of lawyers here today. Um, in fact, uh, but I didn't have to bother bringing them in. They were, they were happily kind of delivered to me by um, the American Bar Association. Here, just one second. I think we lost a connection there. Okay, sorry. We're doing some technical wrestling here. They'll figure it out. They're a bunch of lawyers, right? Um, yeah, and um, as, as many of you know who come to my forums regularly, you know that there's a lot of talk about how Chinese, the Chinese government over the past 20, 30 years has been passing many, many more environmental laws. And in the past 10, I'd say about eight years, we're seeing a lot more progressive amendments being made to laws, new laws. And, um, and, and what's actually really neat is that you know, China, China actually has an environmental bar. And it, it's, it's becoming an incre playing an increasingly important role, um, both as counsel to corporations, governments, and, and we you know, have this great opportunity today to get a little picture of, of, of dynamic lawyers about what they're doing in China. I'm going to pass this over to Roger Matzala, who's going to tell you who he is. Well, you kind of know who he is. <laughs> Former general counsel EPA, man. <laughs> thank you, Jennifer, and appreciate the introduction. We have a virtual flood of people to thank oh, yes. today. Um, and we want to begin by thanking you and, and Peter. Thank you for providing such a great host, being such a great host, providing such a great site for us to have this conversation to do this. We can't think of a better place or a better team to be coordinating with, so we're really honored to be here. And I'm Roger Martell. I'm here in my capacity as the co-chairman of the American Bar Association's International Environmental Law Committee. And I'd um, like to thank Jim Rubin, who's my co-chair, who could not be here today. Um, and in particular, Steve Wolfson, and I know many of you know Steve, probably everyone knows Steve, and none of this could have happened uh, without Steve, and Steve has been wonderful from planning this from the beginning to helping making sure everything goes like clockwork during this whole trip. And so, Steve, we really appreciate everything you've done to make this such a successful endeavor. Um, and this was actually something that came out of a conversation that Steve and I had probably about 18 months ago working with the All China Lawyers Association in China to try to promote the idea of some cooperation between lawyers in the U.S. and lawyers in, the China, in China, both on governance issues, on environmental issues, being able to attend these conferences together, being able to participate together. And so we're very happy to see in a relatively short time this coming together, and we hope this is the beginning of a very successful cooperation both here and in China, and also a model for us working with other countries as well and helping to promote um, bar leadership, bar organization, and substantive discussion on environmental legal issues. So we're very thankful, again, for you hosting us and for this coming together. We're very, very honored by the delegation and the efforts you've made to share very valuable information with us during this trip. And in case you don't know, uh, they've spent about four or five days so far in the United States. They were at Salt Lake City towards last week and over the weekend where they attended the American Bar Association's largest annual environmental law conference. And we're 
had very successful presentations and were, were really a highlight of the entire conference. There was a lot of interest in being able to share ideas and share information with the delegation from China, and it really made this conference one of the, the most special conferences in the history of the organization because of the participation. We did ask them to reroute their tra travel to come to Washington, specifically to be here at the Wilson Center and to visit with some government officials. So they weren't originally planning to do this, but we asked them to come and they agreed to do so. And we're very honored that you did uh, so that you could share this information, not just with people in Salt Lake City who were there, but also in Washington. So thank you for your time. And with that, Jennifer, I will turn it back to you. We're infinitely cooler here in DC than Salt Lake City, right? And you all are gonna prove it, right? The, now your job today is gonna be to listen attentively intently and ask good questions. Um, so I'm going to be real brief. You have the bios, but I wanted to say that we're going to start off with um, Professor Wang Jin, who is the director and founding member of the All China Lawyers Association Environmental and Resources Law Committee, the ERLC. In fact, that's what the whole, whole delegation they're from. And he's a professor of environmental law at Peking University uh, Law School. And actually, he, it's funny because we were joking forwards. There are a lot of people named Wang in Beijing. And so I was really, oh, I'd forgotten that this Wong actually spoke for me about seven years ago. It was like, you know, you know there's a lot of, there can, there's probably at least one more Wong gene in China, right? Um, so yeah, so I'm really happy to welcome Professor Wong back. So he's going to start off, and he's got a very rich PowerPoint slide that we will be posting online later because there's information that, you know, he's doing the impossible. He wants to educate you on lots of stuff about the background and some of the recent developments in China's pollution prevention and control laws. His last three slides had me salivating, right? That water thing going here again. That, you know, because it's really talking about what's really coming down the pike. And I think that, that that's going to be the area where we're going to want to be asking him questions about in the Q&A. And second, we have um, Miss another Wang. Again, we're, we've got three in the delegation. We've got Wang Ji Hong, who is, um, she's going to talk about the problems and, and obstacles of legal practice in environment and, and natural resource regulation. So go a little bit deeper into some of the, you know, those of here at the China Environment Forum, we talk a lot about some of the problems with implementation, but she's going to give us the lawyer perspective about, you know, the, the challenges that they have there. She's the Secretary General of ERLC and the managing partner of the V&T Law Firm, and she leads the firm's environmental law, infrastructure, and construction practices, and has done a fair amount, evidently, on energy issues. Note that, people. The third person to speak will be Mr. Hu Yulai. We tried to get him to change his, change his name to Wang, but he wouldn't. Um, he's going to um, talk about China's environmental litigation and uh, in public interest litigation, which I, we've had a few people over the years, particularly from um, Center for Legal Assistance for Pollution Victims, talking about this, this idea of this kind of nascent um, public interest law emerging in China. And Mr. Hu is also a member, of course, of the ERLC, and he's head of the Concerto Law Firm's environmental law practice, and um, he's, just, he's done a lot of um, corporate compliance training. Good news to know that, right? Training the corporations to do their stuff. We also in the room, we do have, we do have another, the other Wang. We, we have um, Wang Hui Hong, who um, she has a, a pretty strong background, evidently, also in environmental law in China. And while she's not presenting, she will be there to answer questions. We'll put them on the spot later. And then um, we also have uh, Lu Jing, where's, ah, there you are, hiding right in front of me, who um, she's done a lot of um, work looking at um, the protection of farm products and the source of pollution, kind of looking at establishing a declaration system for place of origins. Those of you who come to my meetings fairly often know that we've done some food safety work, and there's a massive challenge because of the fragmented food system and, and having kind of traceability. So again, I I even if she doesn't get time to talk a lot during the Q&A, those of you interested in the these kinds of transparency issues can gently tackle her afterwards, OK? But don't hurt her. All right, I'm going to stop talking now. Right, that flood of words. I got I to use his line one more time, and I'd like to invite um, Professor Wang Jin to um, to give us a talk. Thank you. Thank and you. and will you sit when you present, okay. or, or if you want to stand, you have to use this mic. Do you want to stand? Are you kind of a sit? Okay, sitting better keeps him in control. Hmm. Thank you. Wacky. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> Dear Ms. Jennifer Tanner, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is a, a very pleasure to be here in Wilson Center to discuss issues about the implementation of the Chinese environmental law with the, our U.S. colleagues. 
And uh, as time is limited today, I want to very briefly dis describe a few questions on my, on my slide. First, I would like to introduce the environmental law layer laid down by our NPC Standing Commit Committee. In order to save time, I'm going to go through the slide very quickly. <clears throat> Here is the com comprehensive laws uh, in China, A, B, C, D, E. Uh, we have uh, five law laws. A B, uh, the others is the pollution control laws. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> uh, uh, there is a law of the uh, natural control, uh, natural conservation, and the natural uh, protection. Mm, we have too much law. <laughs> Laws. Uh, the D is the energy law. <coughs> energy, there are A, B, C, D, E. The, f the five laws. Ah, the E. In China, other laws relating with environmental protection are civil law, protect, uh, property law, and uh, tort law. And uh, uh, besides, besides uh, provisional pre uh, provision on environmental law, uh, environmental crimes uh, in the criminal law. We have a two. Uh, we, we have make, it, make make too much law in the uh, three years since uh, 1979. However, but the general uh, environment protection situations is just passion improvement and the overall environmental quality in our country is still getting lower. This situation has not been changing much since the 19, 1980s. Today, adverse result of environmental damage continue to emerge in our country, such as heavy metal pollution, air pollution, water pollution, and uh, their influence to human health. All these several environmental problems tell us that the existing laws, rules, and the standards have not taken enough actual effect. Why? Uh, next, let us look at, look at uh, some of the major factors which uh, affecting the implementation and the effectiveness of China, China's environmental law. I would like, uh, I, I would like uh, uh, to introduce the, in turn, the uh, legal system and the administrative system, uh, admi administrative Factor, judicial factor, and uh, system, and uh, system, and uh, system medical frame, uh, factor. Oh, yeah. First is the legislative factor, which I, I assume it, I assume it up as uh, no major mistakes, but no far-reaching effects. Why I do? Why do I say so? In January, our environmental law does not provide for the following aspect: are that there is no clear proving, uh, provision. The first is that it is better not to t 
touch garment structure when making design, uh, uh, making legislation. Detailedly, fiscal measures may not be written in specifically legislations either. The second, the second, the law usually provides on the authority of specific administration, but do not prescribe the responsibility of their local governments. And in practice, the leaders of specifically administration are appointed by the government. Therefore, when there is a conflict between the local government and the law, the leaders, the leaders of specifically at a, a specific administration, including Environmental Protection Agency, usually choose to listen to the legal government leader's view instead of obeying legal provision. The third, in China, the draft of the proposed laws is usually prepared by the administrative authorities. This never can conflict between different laws. The fourth, remedies provided by judiciary provising are not enough to protect uh, the victims' legal rights in environmental disputes. Fifth, administrative penalty for violation of environmental law are ineffective. Many enterprises pre pre prefer the brick law because they could, they could earn more by doing so and the punishment is usually very low. Six, we do not have a complete official accountability system. Ah. Uh, here, uh, here I have a, 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 a one, a one picture. This is a Chinese group, a GDP growth and uh, COD, SO2, energy consumption from uh, 1979 to 2008. Uh, in China, uh, from the six five-year plan period to the 10th five-year plan period, which refers to the 25 years between uh, 1981 to 19, uh, to 2005, China's uh, environmental protection targets for each five years plans have never be, been totally completed. This slide shows the complete, com, completion, completion studies of the National Environmental Protection Plan made in the year of 2000, of 2000. During the 10th five-year plan period, which is from 2000 to 2005. Uh, in this slide, the blue ones refer the number of actual discharging pollution pollutants in the year of 2000. The red ones, red ones, the red ones refer to the target number of the year of 2005, and the yellow ones refers to the numbers of actual discharged pollutants in the year of 2005. Uh, uh, take SO2 as an example. We can see that is the total emission. This is a major pollutant emission cast during the 11th five-year period. Uh, because China environmental protection targets for each five-year plan have never been totally complete. 
the 11th five-year plan have provided the major plan, uh, pollutant emission cuts as a binding target, uh, is especially uh, restrain local officials. Of course, the implementation of uh, energy conservation and the, em <coughs> in, and the emission reduction poli mm, po politicals is uh, also a result of uh, pressure of global climate change and the uh, dynamic dynamics of international influence. Uh, the, second, uh, the second fact is the environmental law enforce capa uh, capabilities is still low, and uh, this is uh, because of the needs of local government to achieve economic growth. <coughs> Next. Our computer doesn't speak Chinese. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I see. <laughs> uh, look at this slide. Uh, uh, this slide shows the environmental protection investment and uh, its proportion in GDP from 1980 to uh, 2010. Uh, it said that in the developed country, the proportion is usually around the, uh, three percent. All of the total investment in pollution control projects have been increased. Its proportion in GDP has not increased in the last dozen years. In certain years, the proportion dropped and uh, the highest proportion was less than uh, 0 0.3%. Uh, look at this picture, this slide. The left chart shows the number of uh, personnel in local environmental protection agency from 1998 to 2008. Today, this number is a little more than 180,000. The right chart shows the number of persons in the Ministry of Environmental Protection. Today, the number is about uh, 2,400. It said that the EPA has more than 20,000 uh, employees. Uh, the third, let me brief, uh, briefly talk about the uh, judicial branch. As I have uh, mentioned before, there is uh, no enough judicial protection for victims in environmental torts and the criminal crime in China. In China, the power of the appointing and the removing personnel in local courts is held by local government, including CCP branch, local. Uh, so local uh, the local uh, courts are subject uh, to local government. Uh, on, the, uh, on the one hand, because society, uh, social uh, stability is the most important achievement of local government. And because there are usually loads of victims in even, in even one pollution event, being uh, afraid of having based a bad social influence, the local governments may choose not to let the court hear pollution cases, uh, is, uh, is especially mass uh, pollution case. On the other hand, due to the um, ambi, um, ambiguity, 
ambiguity of legal uh, norms. Even if the court has uh, accepted the, ca the case, the victim may show loss in the end. Uh, loss in the end. And the pollutant discharging enterprise, because they have contributed to the development of local uh, economy, the government may choose not to punish them. Even if they are punished, these uh, enterpri in enterprise still feel no fear uh, because the penalty are usually very, <coughs> are usually very low, and uh, normally they will no be held criminally li uh, li liable for environmental crime. The fourth major facts affecting the implementation and the effectiveness of China's environmental law is the systematic and the institution fact. Uh, in the past, in the past, because the GDP, uh, because the GDP supremacy, uh, economic gro growth indicate where for quality, prefer quantity. Currently, you see assesses whether an official is good or no. Uh, it's good or no. So, uh, local officials had to uh, attach more importance to uh, economic <coughs> growth and uh, pay the relative less attention to social and uh, public welfare service. But in the government work report, which was just adopted by the NPC, Premier Wen, uh, Premier Wen Jiabao addressed that is year's GDP growth target is 8%. Uh, percent. In, 2000, in, 2009, in 2009, it is 9 uh, percentage. The reports also require local government not so solely, solely achieve GDP growth, but the focus on changing the mode of growth. Uh, that, is, uh, uh, that is to say, uh, it does not matter if the final uh, GDP growth of this year is less than 8 per, uh, percentage. The key is uh, changing to extensive mode of economic development. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Finally, I would like to talk about uh, our recent development. Uh, China is now a, pre a period to high uh, intense of environmental pollution accidents. Accidents, and uh, there is some action we we are going to take. Uh, the first, the central government is going to establish the uh, shoe fund to restore polluting land, because current pollution of uh, uh, farmland, uh, farmland, and the land around pollutants discharging enterprise is also uh, very serious. The second, we are now promoting environmental protection liability insurance and uh, uh, recurring enterprise with high risk of uh, pollution to buy insurance. The third, the Ministry of Environmental Protection has cooperated with the People's uh, Bank of China to establish a credit list. Uh, according to this police, those in the uh, those enterprise which do not meet uh, environmental protection re requirement will be will not be granted loans. The fourth, we are going to legislate legislate on uh, municipal garbage disposal. Uh, garbage disposal is the uh, hazard 
for various local governments. Uh, because the citizens do not welcome the treatment of uh, burning garbage, we have the create, create a law to regulate billing tongue, uh, billing tongues, municipal, uh, municipal uh, garbage. The fifth tort liability law will send will enter into force on October uh, this. this First, uh, uh, October the first. Uh, it, uh, it it is uh, spe special, uh, specially uh, stipulate stipulate the liability of environmental damage, and uh, now the state council is considering developing a specially uh, a specific method of uh, compensation. The for environmental damage. The sixth, we are uh, uh, drafting the basic um, energy law. This law is going to make comprehensive provision for uh, energy uh, management. The seventh, uh, we will to amend amended the uh, air pollution control law, uh, which I have uh, already introduced it in in South City, uh, South, uh, <coughs> in the uh, South Lake City, the, yeah, yes. The eighth, uh, many local courts have uh, begun to set up an environmental law uh, tribunal to sp specifically, uh, sp spe specifically hear environmental dispute. Uh, thank you for your attention. If uh, there is uh, any question, please join the next session. Okay. Thank you. Keep that slide there for a second, because I want. I'm going to inter chair's prerogative, man. Okay, I'm in charge. I want to ask. Go back to that last slide. Mm. The your first. The yeah, mm. Sami Just if if I could just. I just think it might be helpful for us, because you've listed. This is a very impressive list of new laws, and I've known about some of them. Like we knew that the air pollution control laws being redone. But I was curious, of these laws, which do you think will be passed through in the next year? I think air pollution control. And <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Mm. 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 Yes. Uh, 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 the 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 time I no um with with these laws that you've listed, which are the which ones will probably pass first? Oh uh, it's just a trend. We're not it's just a trend. It's just a trend, yes. Uh, for example, the draft of the basic uh, energy law have been to. Uh, have been uh, reported to the uh, uh, standing committee of uh, MPC. MPC. Mm. And uh, now the, the air pollution control draft, uh, the drafted in, in drafting now. Okay. Mm. Yeah, well, maybe we could dig into that later because I think it's it would be really fascinating to know where these are in the process. But, I mean, even the carbon tax, we're all like, ooh, yeah, we don't we don't have a carbon tax here, do we? Right. All right. Well, wh we'll we'll move on to the next speaker. That's going to be you. So maybe Pete, if you can switch it up there. Um, yeah. Well, let's wait till he gets to the PowerPoint. But I do want to say, as an interjection, to get another water pun in, you can see from his presentation that there's truly a drought in resources for pollution control. That there's little money, few people but lots of laws. But I think it does merit, no, you know, he went through them very quickly, but some, what's really amazing to me is that on the traditional pollutants in China, that it's sometimes amazing that they're not worse than they are when you, when you think of the GDP that's happened. So clearly something is working, but not enough. They're basically running in place like the, like the Red Queen and Alice, right? And they're not moving forward. So I think just kind of just to give you that little, my own commentary here. And now we've got slides up. All right, welcome. All right, thank you. Thank you for uh, Jennifer's excellent moderate. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. First of all, on behalf of all ERLC members, I would like to thank EPA uh, to invite us, which opened the gate for us to come beautiful city, Washington, D.C. And thank, thank 
Thank ABC Rowley for its great coordination and facilitation, which has led us here. My appreciation especially goes to Ms. Jennifer Turner, Mr. Rolly Steller, Mr. Mr. Steve Wolfson, Ms. Kaya Ikuma, and all those people who have made efforts to this event happen. My topic is legal practice and obstacles in environment and resources areas. My speech covers two parts. Part one is regarding general introduction of Chinese lawyers' practice in the environmental protection area. And the part two covers obstacles and solutions regarding environment and resources legal practice. In China, the clients in the environmental resources and energy areas mainly covers enterprises, citizens, government agencies, and NGOs. I would mainly talk about legal service to government and enterprises. The enforcement result largely depends, depends on the standardized acts and the determination of government agencies, different from that of the U.S. government. Chinese government does not have any internal legal councils. Therefore, more and more government agencies resort to external councils. Environment and energy-related government agencies will have hired legal councils from outside, such as the Ministry of Environmental Protection, the Ministry of Land and Resources, Planning Committees, and the Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development. In addition to litigation and arbitration representation, external attorneys are advertising the government agencies on administration work in expanding aspects. Some government agencies, some government agencies even request the law firms to send counsels to work in their facility on a regular basis. Take my firm, for example. As the legal counsel for the Ministry of Environmental Protection and the Beijing Municipal Environmental Protection Bureau, we are often requested to attend their internal work meetings and discussions aside from on-site legal service. The major services areas for environmental protection agencies include administrative licensing, administrative penalty, participation in lit litigation, administrative reconsideration and litigation, and administrative co compensation. Currently, main administrative licensing authority of the agencies are review and approval of construction projects in terms of environmental protection, environmental facility inspection and acceptance, issuance of green tags for automobiles and hazardous waste business licenses, etc. Among these responsibilities, the one giving rise to most disputes is environmental administrative licensing. In the face of such difficult cases, for example, in a case where business licensing is sought when the shop is opened on the first floor of a residential building, environmental protection bureaus would often come to legal councils. Service in this regard focuses on the legal application and procedurally Quality review on specific administrative licensing matters. This is to ensure the legality of government ad administrative acts. Administrative penalty. In the aspects of administrative penalty, legal counsels assist government agencies and ensure correct legal application and due process. In cases where major interests of the party to be 
punished are at stake. Councils would alert and suggest the government to have hearings to ensure the right to hearing of the party to be punished. Participation in legislation. As, ex as external legal counsels to the government agencies, attorneys will, to a large extent, to a large extent, be involved in the policy making and the formation of regulatory documents. Laws and regulations with the input of lawyers will have better results in terms of its legality and enforceability. During the draft of almost all laws, suggestions would be solicited through all China Lawyers Association. Uh, this happened um, near, um, nearly ten, nearly five years which enhanced the opportunity of lawyers' involvement in the legislation in environmental resources and energy areas. Suggestions are accepted and incorporated in a number of laws and regulations, such as the Environmental Protection Law on Solid Waste Pollution, Water Pollution Prevention Law, <coughs> provisions on ERA of Planning and Tort Law. administrative reconsideration and litigation. There are about 80,000 administrative reconsideration and litigation cases annually in China. And the number is getting bigger and bigger. Government agencies used to be arrogant, have strength and legal awareness after being sued. Arbitrary acts of the government agencies are being corrected and becoming standardized. In particular, the transparency of government administration has been greatly enhanced. Administrative compensation. According to national compensation law, any citizen or enterprise shall be entitled to national compensation if their personal or property rights are violated due to flaws in the performance of government obligations. I am currently assisting a government agency in handling an administrative compensation case. This is a case regarding administ administrative penalty and the current local regulations Automobiles with yellow tags are not allowed to enter the fifth ring road in Beijing. In this case, such a car is identified later by the Environmental Protection Bureau as a green tag car, which means it can get into the fifth ring road. However, the Bureau failed to pass the information to the Traffic Regulation Bureau timely. <coughs> Therefore, a fine of 100 RMB was imposed on the driver when he drove within the fifth ring road. Si since there are flaws in the performance of administrative obligations, my firm is assisting the Bureau in negotiating compensation with the driver. Legal services for enterprises including litigation and non-contentious. In China, administrative reconsideration and litigation cases mainly happen in environmental area, while they rarely occur in the resources and the energy areas. Legal service for enterprises centers on non-contentious legal matters. Legal practice in this area can cover a wide range of subjects, such as project legality review, EIA permit, bidding and listing of exploration and mining rights, financing, merger and acquisition, in international procurement, construction, operation, listing, and other related legal issues, such as issuance, tax, and employment law. Legal relations involved in these matters are diversified and 
complex. There's a broad space for international cooperation in providing legal service of, for enterprises. Since there's a seldom lawyers here today, so uh, I went to discuss the cooperation between Chinese lawyers and foreign lawyers. But you can ask in the Q&A if you want to know. Right? If you are interested. <laughs> <laughs> yes. OK. <laughs> There's a broad space for international cooperation in providing legal service for enterprises. For example, in a mining project, one party can be the attorney for the seller while the other for the buyer. Attorneys in the two countries can communicate and share deal resources, creating more business opportunities for our clients as well as generating more legal needs. For example, in an IPO project, if a green enterprise chooses to be listed abroad, then the whole process will involve local attorneys as well as foreign attorneys, since the Chinese clients do not have much knowledge of foreign law firms. They will rely on the recommendation of local attorneys. As more and more enterprises are going out of China, for example, to purchase resources and energy in foreign countries, and this, uh, this scope covers uh, a wide, uh, a wide areas from oil, um, coal, uh, mining, uh, and the forests. Chinese attorneys also need to look beyond Chinese laws. Thus, cooperation between foreign attorneys become inevitable. In other regard, <coughs> when foreign attorneys are confronted with litigation and arbitration problems in China, they will also need to select the local attorneys to work together on the litigation and the execution. In fact, many local offices of foreign law firms have established a good relationship with local law firms. In fact, uh, uh, for example, my firm has established um, cooperation, uh, cooperative relationships re with several foreign law firms, and we often exchange uh, um, views and study each other. Um, we will provide training for foreign firms, and uh, and we also invite them uh, training for our attorneys, and several. Uh, several lawyers are invited to be the counsel of our committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exchange activities are getting more and more. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> Legal service for environmental NGOs. Currently, a number of environmental NGOs have emerged in China, such as the China Environmental Protection Foundation, All China Environment Federation, and Friends of Nature. While non international environmental NGOs are also setting branches in China, such as the Greenpeace and the NRDC. Um, Justice, of, uh, Justice of Earth. Oh, Earth justice. Earth justice. Earth justice. Earth justice. Oh, they have an yeah. office too? Oh. Yeah, they okay. visited uh, China and we discussed some uh, cases. Yeah. Uh, they have an office. Yeah. In assisting these NGOs in their environmental protection activities, attorneys are playing an increasingly important role. Mm, I myself provided many legal support for Greenpeace NGO. Pro bono? <laughs> Pro bono. <laughs> Just joking. Yeah. Yeah? Well, good. All right. Uh, most mostly. Mostly. Yeah. Mostly. 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 Okay. Let's take a look at the part two obstacles and solutions in providing environmental legal service. As Mr. Wang Jin has uh, introduced, 
there are so many <coughs> problems and obstacles um, in environment and resources and energy areas. So following is some of my suggestions. First, the ERA law needs to be revised and the ERA makeup should be banned. The Chinese ERA law has a fatal weakness that the EIA, which should be which should be done in advance can be made up later. Yeah, uh, uh, everyone knows Oops, the yeah. <laughs> famous 31 article. Yeah. <laughs> a number of pollution <laughs> projects are constructed before ERA is done. Environmental protection agencies thus have to approve such, such projects and pressures from all around, which made the ERA system less effective. Mm -hmm. Second. <coughs> impose severe punishment against environmental violations. According to current regulations, polluting companies only have to pay for a small amount of money for violations. Fines are one or two hundred thousand renminbi, while penalty for major accident is only one million. The punishment is not strong enough to have expected results. Third. Increase compensation for mental distress victims. In practice, mental distress victims are rarely com compensated or only by a symbolic amount. Mm -hmm. The newly promulgated tort law provided, provides explicit legal grounds for mental distress compensation, compensation which has made it possible to obtain high compensation. This is the first time to incorporate mental distress compensation in Chinese law. Mm -hmm. Fourth, establish compensation system for damages to the national environment and resources. Some pollutants such as arsenic, when they get into the earth <coughs> or ground water, will cause severe damages to the land and the resources. Uh, I would like to learn whether the U.S. has established such compensation systems so we can learn uh, from it. Mm -hmm. Fifth, balance <coughs> environmental protection with energy and resources consumption <coughs> amid speedy economic development. As a developing country, China has not yet mentored, settled the problem between environment and development. On one hand, China has metropolitan cities like Beijing and Shanghai. On the other hand, there are lots of underdeveloped cities and rural areas where people have only started to get adequate food and clothing. Lots of heavy polluters, such as coal, chemical, ceramic, Cement companies and the thermal power plants are big taxpayers and appeal and prices to local government in terms of GDP. Therefore, many local governments are blowing hot and cold <coughs> on environmental protection, taking account of economic, economic developments and the political achievements. Luckily, the new evaluation system for government officials has incorporated environmental achievements as a parameter. Six, currently, the public interest litigation system has not been formed in China. Though NGOs like All China Environmental Federation have successfully brought a number of civil and administrative public interest litigations, the results are only limited to the cease of violation. As two losses victims suffered, they have not been effectively compensated. And the violators are not punished heavily enough for their illegal acts. The biggest issue is that due to the lack of systematic legal support, <coughs> current public interest litigation cannot be expanded nationwide. On this regard, Lawyer Hu will give a detailed introduction and analysis. Though time is limited, I hope our communication is unlimited. 
<laughs> I wish we we could have more opportunities to communicate uh, and learn from you. Uh, and welcome to China. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Well, as we're switching over, you know, I, I want the delegation to know that by coming to present today, you now belong to my mafia. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that part of my network, the, there are will people that say, people do come and look for people that speak, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, I hope that those of you that are regular attendees are see, there's some really fascinating nuggets in, in both of these presentations. I thought, I was actually, I feel really stupid. I didn't realize before that Chinese agencies didn't have their own internal lawyers. I mean, I, kinda, I think I knew and didn't know. It's like, wow, that's good. <coughs> but, um, and I'll, all right, I think we'll, I filled that gap. And, um, and I also want to do acknowledge that, um, that um, Wu Anjing at the end there, she's going to be the interpreter. And she's been the interpreter for the whole time that the delegation has gone around town, so we have to remember to acknowledge her, too. So, Mr. Hu, could you uh, and make sure you speak into the mic clearly so we can record? Okay. And he just, uh, uh, is going to be talking about public interest law. Those of you whose Chinese is a bit weak today, that says public interest law. But you could <coughs> practice if you don't, if you do know some Chinese. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. 刚才王律师也讲了，这个中国的环境方面、法律方面的障碍与建议方面，就是要提高环境公益诉讼制度，建立啊，建立环境公益诉讼制度。那么我现在讲的题目呢，就是中国环境公益诉讼现状与展望。Just now, Ms. Wang has mentioned, uh, has talked about uh, uh, obstacles and uh, solutions to uh, Chinese environmental um, uh, practice, um, um, which mentioned about building a public interest litigation system. So my, uh, I'm going to talk about the current status and outlook of public interest litigation in China. 我们选这个题目呢，是二零零九年的时候年会，有很多律师都提交了有关环境公益诉讼的论文。The reason we picked this topic is during the 2009 annual meeting of our ERLC. Many members have uh, submitted uh, uh, papers on this subject. 这个题目现在不仅仅是中国。在关心，我看到美国也非常关心中国的环境公益诉讼。This uh, is not only a topic that is concerned by the uh, by the Chinese, but also I see that a lot of U.S. Um, of, uh, of colleagues are also um, uh, pay great attention to it. 在前天的 ABA SER 三十九届年会上。就有律师来咨询这个环境法，中国环境法庭的问题。At the thirty-ninth ABA Environmental uh, Law Conference, uh, there was uh, lawyers um, asking about the environmental court. Um, um. 我现在主要讲四个方面的问题。uh, I would like to talk about uh, four, on four aspects. 希望呢，给大家一个抛砖引玉的呃机会，然后大家进行一些讨论。I uh, hope at at the end of this, I can uh, um, a lot of um, um, communications can be invited. 也希望和大家一起交流和学习。I also um, want to communicate and also learn from you. 一个方面是中国环境纠纷情况。The first uh, uh, is about the environmental dispute in China. 第二个方面是环境公益诉讼的现状。The second is the status of uh, environmental public interest litigation. 在这里面我们会介绍几个环境公益诉讼的案例。I uh, during this part I would uh, talk uh, uh, on several cases. 第三个方面是环境公益诉讼案件审理机构及相关的一些法律规定。
The third is about the adjudic adjudication institutions and relevant local regulation and legal documents. And this will cover the environmental courts. The fourth is about the main problems and the outlook of environmental protection, public interest litigation. From 1980s to uh, to the 90s, um, they are annually um, um, 100,000 uh, cases, environmental disputes cases. Oh, excuse me, it's 100,000. Uh -uh. Starting from 1998, the uh, number of such cases uh, increases dramatically, and um, by 2003, um, it, it's already over 500,000. Chungoda Settlements or mediation or administrative reconsideration, um, and also um, uh, litigation. And also, some are um, intervened by um, the media and get invo get uh, resolved. Yeah. Um, among those environmental disputes, uh, a number of them are uh, public interest. Uh, cases. Um, a number of well-known cases include. 2001年11月，南京市东南大学两位教授诉南京市规划局院。Um, in two thousand in two thousand one, uh, uh, November two thousand one, there was a case. Uh, two teachers at South uh, East University in Nanjing City versus um, Planning Bureau of Nanjing Municipality. Uh, and there is also a case, um, uh, uh, the uh, procurement in Shandong Liling City um, uh, um, brought an action against a chemical plant. And also the EIA, uh, the EIA case uh, in 2005 on the um, Leakage prevention of the Yuanming Yuan Garden. Uh, the, lake, the lake, the lake of Yuanming Yuan Garden. This Yuanming Yuan case uh, was resolved um, through a media, media intervention. And there is also a case, um, our, our administrative uh, reconsideration case. It's on administrative penalty imposed on Jingshajiang power plant, a power station. Uh, I'm going to talk about the environmental um, public interest litigation.
欢迎。那我念念完算了啊，你这样。Oh. So the urgent need is pushing、uh, environmental public interest litigation forward. In this regard, practice seems to have gone beyond legislation. We can see the development of、um, public interest litigation in several related cases. 环境公益诉讼包括环境公益民事诉讼和环境公益行政诉讼。The public interest litigation,、uh, the environmental public interest litigation, includes、um, civil and also administrative cases. 有一个案子是中华环保联合会诉江阴港集装箱公司环境污染侵权纠纷案。So there's a case, the All China Environment、um, Federation,、um, to bring an action against uh, uh, Jiang Yingang. Uh, Jiang Import、uh, Container Company on environmental tort. 此案件是中国首例由社团组织作为原告提起的环境公益民事诉讼。So this is the first case, a、uh, first civil case, to have the a、uh, social organization to be the plaintiff. 你就直接念这个案子就行。啊、uh, ，and the the case, um, uh. A brief introduction.、Um, so, in 2009, in May 2009,、um, the plaintiff ACEF、um, has received a letter petitions from over 80、um, residents from Jiangyin City,、um, revealing that the defendant has produced air, noise, and water pollutions during its business operation of loading and uploading. As well as transportation of iron ore powder,、um, the operation of the defendant has severely impacted, affected the、uh, air quality, water quality、um, of the Yangtze River, as well as environment of the、uh, surrounding resident residential areas.、Um, so ACEF invested, investigated, and found these to be true. 刚才说的中华环保联合会，就是也是王律师说的 NGO 组织的一个。啊 ，the All China Law, the All China Environment Federation, the ACEF is also one of the NGOs mentioned earlier by Miss Wang. 下面的是环保联合会的一件环境公益行政诉讼案件。哦，这个我没说，就要说嘛，先那个现状，那我把它说了吧。So as to the ACEF case, um. Uh, uh, it, the case was filed、um, in July 6, 2009,、um, with the Wuxi Intermediate People's Court,、um, requiring the requiring the defendant to cease violation, remove impediments, eliminate risks, and also for、uh, restoration. So,、uh, on the basis of、um, uh, EIA laws and other environmental laws,、uh, the court has ruled. Um, that the the defendant immediately stop environmental、um, pollution acts, and in September 2009,、um, uh, through the mediation mediation of the court, our our settlement、um, agreement a, a mediation agreement was reached, and the defendant was required to、um, make up our EIA, and also、uh, during the、um, During the EIA period, during when they are um, sub, um, producing the EIA,、um, they they are not allowed to affect polluting the surrounding environment, and they will also need to report regularly to the court about how this agreement was executed was、uh, implemented, and also they need to report to the court about the the、uh, mon monitoring data of the environment. 前面还提到一个以检察院名义起诉化工厂的环境公益民事诉讼案，是检察院作为原告的。So、uh, previously I mentioned about the procurement、um, suing against a chemical company. So this is the first case、um, with the procurement to be the plaintiff. 
，贵阳市两湖一库管理局诉贵州天风化工有限责任公司排放污染物超标一案。And um the case um the Guiyang uh two lake and one reservoir administration versus Guizhou Tianfeng a chemical company on、uh, excess of pollution discharge standard. This is the case.、Oh. This is the first case、um, with the administrative agency、um, being the plaintiff. China is now in Guiyang City. Yunnan, uh, Yunnan State and Wuxi established a environmental court or environmental court hearing. Uh, the Yunnan and Wu Yunnan Province, Wu Wu Xi City, and also Guiyang Municipality, they have established environmental courts.、Mm. Um, so it's in in November twenty two thousand seven, the the Intermediate Court of Guiyang City and also、uh, Qingzheng Court、uh, established there. Environmental Protection Courts, and in May six two thousand eight, um, the, the Wuxi City of Jiangsu Province, um, the, it's an intermediary court. They have established an environmental court, and in uh November, uh, in December eleventh two thousand eight, um, the intermediate, uh, court of Kunming, um, Kunming City has established its environmental court, and in December. In December eighteenth, two thousand eight, the Yuxi,、uh, the Intermediate Court of Yuxi City,、um, established such a, a similar court, and uh, thereafter, um, many county level courts, such as Chenjiang and Tonghai,、uh, in Yuxi City, also established、uh, such courts. In the above courts, the plaintiff submitted the relevant documents. So there are a few、um, local regulations and documents issued in these areas. So,、uh, the main problems、uh, in environmental public interest litigation. 比如，原告主体资格与涉案范围的扩大。呃、uh, ，one is、uh, the expansion of the standing and case acceptance scope。还有举证责任的合理分配。Second, uh, the reasonable allocation of the burden of proof. 侵权责任法，中国侵权责任法在七月份就要实施。The tort law is about to be、uh, implemented uh, uh, starting from July。确立了环境责任纠纷案件的举证责任倒置原则。And this law has、uh, identified has、um, provide the、um, burden of proof.、Um, Of environmental cases, which is the the shift of burden of proof. From our as a lawyer's perspective, not only to stand on the side of the polluters, but to stand on the side of the company and the management side to look at the problem. From our attorney's view, actually, we need to um to um we need to start from um. Also, in,、uh, for example, the environmental、uh, pollution victims, and also、um, the enterprises, and also administrative agencies. We have to view these um, um, in different angles. 举证责任可能会成为一个新的争议焦点。The burden of proof can be a new、um, a new topic for、um, for argument for 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 debate. 还有一个就是要积极开展环保 NGO 
、组织的诉讼以及促进环保律师的发展。And the the third is about to um vigorously um um conduct uh, environment uh, litigations by environmental uh, NGOs and also to uh, promote the development of environmental lawyers. 环保法庭的建立，对于律师提高提出了更高的要求。The establishment of the environment, environmental court also has um, um, posed um, higher requirements on lawyers. 当然，还有一些公益诉讼方面的问题，我认为不是最为主要的。Certainly, there are other issues and problems. In public interest litigation in, in environmental area, but I don't think they are the main、uh, issues. 比如诉讼费、鉴定费、律师费等的负担问题。For example, who pays for the litigation fee, for the evaluation fee, um, 诉讼鉴定 and also the attorney's fee. 嗯，环保组织的。律师费，呃，收费问题。And also about the issue, ah,、uh, about the the charge of environmental NGOs. 我这就是抛砖引玉。So I I say this to invite more comments. 希望大家能够一起来讨论。I hope that we can all discuss together. All right. Let Let's thank. Thank you. Okay, I've got、um, my research assistant Ada Wu there on the microphone. So when you do ask a question,、um, say your name and affiliation and speak clearly. Let's not have two super long questions because poor An 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 Jing over there's got to interpret for some. All right, hands are high. Anna Bratel will start us off here, and the questions can be for all all Chinese lawyers in the room, right? <laughs> yes, everybody. Hi, I'm Anna Bratel from the Congressional. Uh, Executive Commission on China, and my question is about the new environmental indicators included in the evaluation system. The is it cadre evaluation system or which evaluation system is it, and what are the new、uh, in environmental indices? Oh, sorry.、Um. I, I think I'll, I'll restate.、It. I think that's a question for you. Asking about how how those local officials are going to be judged on their environmental performance, want to have a little bit more detail on like what are those indicators? Yeah, what are the indicators and which evaluation? And and which evaluation system is this? Make sure. Okay. So I'll answer it in Chinese. Okay. Ah, uh, 实际上这个对于呃官员的这个呃 evaluate 的这个评测的啊方法，并不是一种真正的法律意义上的评测方法。So such evaluation is not a evaluation in the sense of a legal context. 呃，事实上是这个呃，中央政府呃，应该是就是呃，中央政府对地方官员的任免的时候，会考虑呃，你在任期内所在的、所管辖的这个地区，它的呃环境的这个指标达标的情况。Um, this is when the central government are、uh, appointing、uh, local officials. They will consider whether during their terms of during their terms whether、uh, the environment environmental um, uh, 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 the all the environmental standards are met, whether they are the environmental standards are met, and etc. 呃，那么在中国呢，就是呃，每年要完成的这个环境指标是分解到每一年要达到在某呃各个方面要达到的一个标准。那么再把这这个这样的一个目标呢，是分分解在每一个省都要相应的去完成的。And there are environmental indicators, um, 
So these indicators, these will be um, uh, delegate or um, be um, allocate to uh, the province will delegate allocate these environmental um, indicators in indicators to um, local to local um, agencies. <笑>不是实现的 so the environmental goals, the environmental objectives, are not um, com um, accomplished during the sixth five-year plan and the tenth five-year plan. So in China, in so during the um, National People's Congress ju just concluded recently, our Premier Wen Jiabao uh, has strengthened um, has has um, emphasized in the 12th five-year plan uh, about um, uh, the achievement of environmental object uh, goals. And, and should add there that in the 12th five-year plan, we do think that there are going to be a lot more clear standards on on traditional pollutants that weren't, you know, regulated before. And if I could interject that the energy conservation law actually has provided, you know, well, it's funny, there's an energy conservation law which actually was, was revised in 2007 which said in the law, if a province does not meet the 11th five-year plan energy efficiency targets, pro some provincial leaders will lose their job. Yeah. So we're waiting to see, end of this year, if heads will roll, right? You know, we'll see. I mean, but that, to my knowledge, that's the really the only piece of legislation that actually says in it that if leaders don't meet a certain target, that they will lose their jobs. I mean, so that, that, that's, it's, a, it's an unusual case, but it shows you the, the seriousness of the central government on the energy efficiency side. But I agree with what you were saying, that for the po traditional pollutants, it seems to be much more the central government stressing, this is important, but doesn't appear that it's really yeah, fully enforced. Yeah, that, that into the leg legislation. Not into the legislation. Yet. OK, some other cre oh, do you want to follow up? G talking to the mic, though. Thank you. So just a quick clarification, besides SO2 and COD, there's no new indicators that will be maybe harder indicators? Uh, so in, in the new, maybe this is uh, Wang Jin's question, in the new air pollution control law, what will be, and, and, I, and I, that law and I think the 12th five-year plan are going to be fairly parallel, what will, be, what will be the traditional pollutants that will be regulated more strictly? So the SO2 and the COD are um, are uh, referred in Chinese law as the main pollutants. CO2以外，还有NO3 and and we'll under the air. The CPPL. They are also an O3 and also the particular suspended particulate. Suspended particulate. 
。但是和美国目前 EPA 的环境标准相比呢，因为我们国家大气污染防治法当中不直接规定排放污染物的这个控制的具体的类别，而是交给这个授权给环保部门制定环境标准来。决定哪些物质要控制，哪些物质不要控制。And actually, which is different from the U.S.、Um, uh, from the U.S.、Uh, Clean Air Act,、um, the the air、uh, pollution prevention law in China does not、um, specifically provide for、um, these、um, pollutants.、Uh, actually, they delegate、um, authority to the、uh, environmental protection bureaus to establish. A, a, a standard,、um, which means that they will decide which、uh, which、um, pollutants to、uh, control and which are not. 比方 EPA 有一百八十九种有害物质的标准，而我们国家有害物质的标准在环保部门只有几种，比 EPA 标准呢少了将近一百八十种。So、uh, the US EPA actually、um, have a list of About 189 pollutants, but in China, the environmental protection、uh, agencies only have a few, um, uh, only have a list of、uh, only a few pollutants, which means we、uh, less than ten. So, now there is also a problem. For example, we have been criticized for saying that China's many projects have not reached their target. Our country has no standards at all. 所以，我们国家的官员可以很理直气壮地说，我们没有超标，因为没有标准。At various occasions, China may be unchallenged that um we um exceed standards. We didn't reach, uh we didn't um we didn't meet the standards. But in fact, we don't have any standards for certain pollutants. So, let alone the excess of the standard. 但是最近中央政府已经发现这个问题很严重，所以目前正在由卫生部、环保部和国家标准委员会三家和法学专家一起在联合讨讨论，如何把环境标准、人体健康标准啊，这个以及啊，就是这两类标准能够有机的在法律当中这个结合起来，而不是由政府部门任意的去。认定哪些该制定标准，哪些不应该制定标准。So the central government are actually pay, paying attention to this issue, and the Ministry of Health, and also the Ministry of Environmental Protection, and the National Standard Committee, and uh, uh, legal experts are convening together to、um, to to work on、uh, trying to incorporate environment environment and also health.、Um, Into health,、um, into the laws, so that it's not just the government、um, stipulates which are the pollutants,、um, but we have、uh, laws、um, for that. 比如说，我们国家在大气污染物标准有一个很重要的标准叫 PM10， 但是呢，实际上我们知道 PM2.5 对人体健康更有害，所以现在我们已经在转变，要把 P PM two and two point five, 把它作为一个很重要的指标。呃 ，indicators such as PM ten, um, is um harmful to the to people's health, but we have standard for that. But as to PM two point five, it's even more um um、uh, harmful to people's health, but we don't have standards for that. So we are working on that. 那我补充一点。Okay. 呃。那么那个呃，刚才那个汪教授介绍的这个呃，中国的关于有害物质的这些呃种类的规定和标准的这些规定，实际上呃，它也是大的范围里头这个大的法律范围里头的一个组成部分。呃、uh, ，I want to um just add a few more comments. Uh. Um, the the things that Professor Wang mentioned about uh, the has uh, the hazardous、um, matters um,、uh, provisions on those those hazardous、um, pollutants on those pollutants are only a part of a bigger、uh, legal framework. 
呃，那么实际上这肯定它的这个它的规定的这个详细和呃粗浅，实际上都是和整个国家环保的发展水平是相关的。And as to the specificness of this, of the standard of this pollutants, um, uh, relates to um, uh, the, 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 the country's um, uh, development. Um, 比如说，呃，美国现在有法律里头有规定一百八十六种，我相信也不是第一天，这个美国的这个立法上马上就有一百八十六种这种污染物的规定，肯定也是经过了多年的这个演进和完善。嗯，是一百八十九种吗，王老师？嗯嗯。So the one hundred and eighty-nine pollutants, uh, that the U.S. EPA has, uh, has laid out are not, um, like accomplished. Um, like, um, uh, quickly, it, it, it must have been a, a, a period of time that the, the EPA gradually identify um, those pollutants as pollutants. Uh, 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 法律法规也会进一步完善。Um, with the growing attention to the envir environment, uh, Chinese laws and standards and uh, will be um, gradually uh, becoming more specific. 那么在这儿，我想给大家介绍一下，就是在今年的人大会上，就是呃，人大代表共提出了五百零六件议案，其中。关于环境和资源保护的案件，提案有四十一件。And I would like to share with our audience that um, uh, during the uh, past um, uh, Congress meetings, the National People's Congress, there there were altogether five hundred and six um, proposals um, submitted, and among these proposals, there are uh, forty-one um, proposals. Um, concerning environment and the resources protection. 那么在政协会上，呃，收到的五千四百三十个提案里面，涉及到节能减排和生态环境保护类的提案有七百七十件。And among the five thousand four hundred thirty proposals of the um, conference of political um, consultation. Um, there are 770 cases as uh, provo pro proposals concerning the energy uh, conservation and um, environment. 那么这些关于环境与资源节能和减排的议案，跟过去的这些年相比，有了极大的一个数数目上的一个提高。So the number of proposals are increasing. Um, comparing to proposal, the number of that in the past years. But can I take more questions? Okay. Okay. I had a question right at, at the end there. Ada? Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Greg Young. I'm here for only uh, four months at the Wilson Center. I teach international law, but not international environmental law. Oh. Uh, I, I have a question about, about um, uh, uh, law schools in China. I, I've been told and, and believe that there are about 600 law schools in China. That's quite a lot, more than probably three times as many as we have here. Um, wondering, uh, must all first degree law students take uh, an environmental law course? Uh, that's uh, a question I'm uh, curious about that. I understand that they have to take uh, three international law courses, which uh, we don't in the United States. I think it's a shame. <laughs> but uh, must uh, students in law schools in China take an environmental law? And must judges also study environmental law? OK. I just want to ask you, China, because there are 600,000 law schools, which is more than the US law schools. I just want to ask you, China, do you want to take the law schools to take the law schools to take the law schools? 以我自己为例
呃，我在呃一九八六年到一九九零年期间上大学。那么我们学过的关于环保方面的法律有哦，环保法、自然资源法，这些都是学过的，这些都是那个当时是一个选修的课程。哦，选修的。Yeah. Um, take myself for example. I was in college, uh, during 1986 to 1990, and um, I I. I took environmental protection law courses and also um, environmental resources law cases, uh, courses, and these are all optional. 那么现在有哪些课程？我想汪老师可能知道的更清楚。And as to current syllabus, I guess um, Professor Wang knows more. Maybe he makes everyone take it. <laughs> 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 He'd make me want to take it. <laughs> 我简单说一下，中国的法学院校现在六百六十所，全全中国。Briefly, uh, there are six hundred sixty law schools in China. 呃，其中大约有十所是比较知名的法学院校。Among which, ten of them are more um famous, a more 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 well known. 大约有五十所是。大家一般知道的院校。And there are about fifty of them that um people might know. People ordinarily know. 大约六百所是新建的法学院校。And about six hundred are newly established. 那么，在法学院校当中，关于环境法这门课程，呃，一九九八年，这个教育部把环境保护法作为中国法学的第二级的学科，就是法学下面一共有九个二级学科。包括传统的刑法、民法、行政法、宪法，也包括环境法。So in 1998, the Ministry of Education、um, made、uh, included environmental protection law as a secondary、um, discipline, which,、um, for example, the, there are altogether nine、um, secondary disciplines.、Uh, for example, the criminal law, civil law. 二零零七年，教育部把环境保护法作为法学的十六门核心课程。In 2007, the Ministry of Education、uh, included、uh, environmental protection law as one of the sixteen、um, core courses. 嗯，那么，所以目前的情况在全国中国各地不一样，有的学校是必修课，有的学校是选修课，有的学校呢。是限定选修的课，或者叫指定选修课，就准选、准必修课。就是你必须选，还是准必须选、嗯？不是任选的。有的人可以选，有的专业是对,对限制选的。啊、嗯，太麻烦。So currently, um, environmental law, uh, courses are, uh, it's different in, um, it depends. For example, in some schools, they are. Um, mandatory that, that you have to take this course, and some are optional. And in some uh, schools, um, uh, uh, they are limited to, they are limited. Can some students can select, but while others cannot. I think we'll move on to another question. But I should note that it, uh, Ada, can you pass the mic over to this side of the room? They're feeling a bit neglected. Um, maybe the, um, the the two the two Chinese gentlemen here, and then the guy at, against the wall. But I should note that, um, like the the Center for Legal Assistance for Pollution Victims, I know has worked with the ABA and also the All China Lawyers Association to do trainings for lawyers and ju sitting judges as well. So there are these training programs. Some other um, environmental NGOs also do similar ones. Oh, and yeah, that little cute little people EPA want to pinch their cheeks. Um, yeah, they they also have been doing training. Sorry, there, Steve, didn't mean to give you a short shrift. I was trying to focus on Chinese organizations. <laughs> yeah, no, the, yeah. I mean, the, why do you think that you know Steve Wilson? And the National Judicial College. Okay, all right. Yes. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, one question is, I want to ask Wang Jing Professor to answer. Uh, from your many years of experience in the environment law, uh, can you explain that in China, the proposal for the environmental reform is not yet mature? Because I am a member of the environmental protection agency in the Department of Environment and Energy. 呃，对这个问题呢比较关注，因为环境税改革呢势必涉及到部门这个利益分配
呃职能调整，还有可能对这个政府的呃组成呃产生一些改变。呃，第二个问题呢，想请这个汪继红教授，您给您刚才讲到了咱们。目前要对环评法进行修改，以改变呃环评候补的问题。这个现象呢也比也比较普遍，比较突出。呃，那么请问呢，如何修改才能达到呃这一目的？是不是仅仅加大对环境违法行为的处罚力度？我觉得呢，好多企业即使面对这个高额的行政处罚呢，也显得很不在乎。Ah, okay. I should ask. Um, we need to keep our questions short and give a chance for the interpreter to interpret. <laughs> so we should have brought. When you have two questions, do one and then she interprets. Okay. Uh, two questions. One is uh, for Professor Wan. Um, this is about the environmental tax. I wonder whether it's time, whether the timing is right for uh, the for for the environmental tax to come out, and because I'm a person now. Um, in environment, in local, not local, I don't know, um, the environmental protection agencies. And so I would like to know specifically um, because it will affect my work. And, um, and also it might, the, the environmental tax may also have um, effects on and the allocation of interests and also the adjustment of functions and also the, the, the agency ad adjustment. Uh, my second question is for for Wang, Ms. Wang Jihong about the EIA um, amendment um, is about how uh, to amend it to um, to uh, eliminate the makeup of EIAs or just um, um, increase the amount of penalties because I know that some companies doesn't care don't care about the penalties they are rich enough to ignore it so these are two questions one does um, where were you from by the way it's from the Environmental Protection Bureau of a, of a county level of Neimengu um, Autonomous the Inner Mongolia Autonomous region. region. Wow. Yeah. He came from the furthest place. The Inner Mongolia, um, the province. Okay. So What's your name? Thank you. What's your name? 我姓杨，杨学忠。杨学忠 ，OK， 好。嗯，环境税这个问题目前在中国是一个非常热门的，其实不光现在已经成熟，在我看来，中国八十年代就成熟了，实际，现在更成熟，快掉下来了。The the environmental tax is a hot topic in China, and um, it is it the timing is already. It's already good timing. That it's already much mature. I don't know if you understand. And also, I, I think it's already uh, the right time. Um, the timing is al already like mature in the 1980s, and it, it's now almost like it's gonna. The fruits are already. It's about to fall out of the tree. Now, there is a very important question that the current government is unable to decide: the relationship between the environment and the energy sector is what? So one issue that the government is um, having difficulties is how to decide how to uh, what's the relationship of environmental tax, resources tax, and energy tax. 那么从环保部的角度来讲，他是说，他认为像二氧化碳的税，他就认为应当是环境税。但是从发改委来讲，他认为这不是环境税，这是能源税。For example, from the point of view of the Ministry of Environmental Protection, CO2 is your environment should be levied under the environmental tax. But according to, <laughs> according to the, um, the, the uh, Development and Reform NDRC. Commission, NDRC, um, the, uh, the CO2 should, uh, should belong to the category of the energy um, tax. So this disagreement shows the conflicts of interest of different agencies. Different agencies. 嗯，财政部认为，呃，环境税很重要，资源税很重要，能源税也很重要。The financial department, um, thinks, uh, all the taxes, the the environmental tax, resources and energy tax, they are all all important. 嗯，所以呢。呃，如果说是环境税也好，能源税也好，二氧化碳税大概在中国二零一三年到一五年应该要开征了
。从目前我的我个人参与这个研究的报告来看。Um, the CO2 tax will be levied um, uh, by 2000, 2013 or, 2000, uh, or, or 2015, um, uh, according to my study and the involvement of the legislation. Of the, of the legislation. 其他还有一些税种，比方说燃油税，燃油税里面是不是也包括了环境资源的税呢？这里头人们的认识也不一样。And another uh, category, the, the, the gas, gas tax, um, people are also wondering whether the, the gas tax has already included um, environmental tax and energy tax. Um, according to uh, to the um, uh, I was uh, in a meeting before I I, w I went to a meeting before I was in a meeting before I uh, came to the U.S. and a leader an official uh, mentioned that the environmental tax uh, would probably be levied. Um, based on um, think, uh, pollutants, uh, for example, SO2, SO2, um, and, uh, but, but uh, at the meantime, the discharge fees will not be canceled. Uh, uh, this we EPA EPA 呃讨论的时候，还专门问了这个美国现在是不是有这个环境税的问题。实际上，美国好像到现在也没有专门的环境税，还是是以费的这个形式来征。呃，可能就在这个理解上，我我跟那个汪老师呢，我们俩人出发点都是好的，都是希望中国的这个环保越来越尽快的越来越好。但是可能在实施的上面呢，我作为律师可能就更现实一些。呃，我想呢，如果是这个，从费改成税的话呢，还是要探讨的更，呃，充分一些，把相关的可能因为征这个税所带来的其他一系列的问题都考虑周全，而并且有比较好的这个，这个解决措施的话呢，在征收可能会实施的效果更好一些。嗯。Before the the workshop, uh, we were at the EPA. Actually, we um, asked about the environmental tax in the U.S. And from my understanding, there's no um, uh, specific ta environmental tax, but um, uh, there is kind of uh, environmental discharge fees and other fees instead of tax. Um, Professor Wang and I, we all we we, we all hope that uh, the environmental protection tax. Um, um, Oh, that's. We all hope that the environmental protection will be um, implemented. And, um, but as a lawyer, I'm more uh, realistic. I think, uh, well, um, uh, do it well. Uh, uh, considering about the ta uh, tax, um, I think th that every aspect should be considered, and the tax the tax should be d um, discussed and deliberated. So that in the end, it will be more enforceable. Okay. Okay. Also to help Anne. Okay. 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 因为他前面的规划部门已经批了这个项目，那么他在环评的这个环节去否掉它，在中国的实践中是非常难的。Um, 就说在中国的实践中，那个呃呃，在规划部门已经批了这个项目的时候，到了环局否决局否决它是很难的。So in fact, in China, when when a project is approved by the planning committees of China, it will be hard for the EPBs for for the environmental protection agencies to deny to to disagree with the 
project in terms of the EIA? Because in China, there is a reality that the plan is stronger than the plan to protect the environment. Because the fact, the reality in China is that the planning committees are, are more powerful than the environmental protection agencies. But now I think that the time is much more mature because in the past few years, the plan has been implemented and has been implemented. I think the, revise, the revision of the EIA law, uh, is the timing is about to come because um, the uh, the environmental impact assessment of um, plans are already being um, implemented. So that I think the time for the revision of the EIA law um, is coming. 那么我的建议就是说，在第三十一条中，现在规定的说，呃，呃。可以，可以限期补办手续，这个给它删除。In the Article Thirty One, um, it's there's an um a sentence saying that can be made made up within a designated time. I suggest we delete this article. Yeah. Okay. I, I, um, I mean, they, we're getting, we're getting. I mean, I, I don't know. We can also chat deeper because I want to get a couple more questions. I was wondering, could Christina? Can I ask Chris, can Christina and then the Chinese gentleman? Can you can you uh, No, Ada, this woman right here, straight across, and then we'll bounce back. I want to be bouncing back between different groups. It, thanks, thanks all of you guys for coming so Christina. far and for your presentation. My name is Christina Larson. I'm an speak slower so the interpreter can catch you. Okay. I'm an editor at Foreign Policy Magazine. My name is Christina Larson. Hold Thank you for coming. I have a question um, for Ms. Wong. Uh, you talked about how government agencies uh, have become less arrogant as they've had to um, respond to litigation about environment and other matters. I wondered if you could tell me who is suing the government. Is it enterprises or citizens groups or NGOs? Both. Both, both. Uh, both uh, enterprises and uh, uh, private citizens. Uh, can yeah. you maybe tell wh one example of a, of a recent um, uh, lawsuit or counter, uh, just oh. to, to help me think more specifically, one example? Because I think, because Mr. Hu had talked about how there are a lot more cases that are brought against governments. Do you have an example of, of one, Ms. Wong, about about a government being sued successfully, I guess? We every year do one two As the legal counsel for the Beijing Municipal um, Environmental Protection Agent, uh, Bureau, um, um, I know that the, the EPB um, will be, be the the, uh, uh, the defendant, um, defendant for one uh, for once or twice annually. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh, 比较多的是呃，就像那个环评过程中的问题。Uh, in cases such as um, problems in the EIA, the EIA licensing. Yeah. Uh, 环评许可。比如说没有充分的听取公众的意见啊，呃，等等。For example, the agency fails to, uh, to listen to the opinions of the public, uh, in a adequate way. 应该听证而没有进行，没有举行听证啊。Or there should be a hearing, but there wasn't. Okay, um, Ada, we had the. The Chinese gentleman here next to the guy in the white? No. Yes. And then the gentleman in the back row, and then we'll come back, and then in the back um, of the room. Thank okay. you. Uh, okay. Okay. Very short. And my question is, um, uh, Professor Wang just, just mentioned about the carbon, de carb carbon tax, right? Uh, would you please give me a brief introduction about what kind of uh, carbon tax 
you think should be implemented in China, and uh, how to supervise the tax be to be used um, properly, because you know the Chinese uh, tax um, tax burden is very heavy in the world now. <laughs> <laughs> so, my question is. And, and where are you from? Uh, I'm from the environment NGO uh, named the Green River. Yeah. Green River. Oh, oh. Yangshinda. Oh. Yangshina <笑>你这个问题很好啊这个目前关于碳税的研究中国有财政部的财科所发改委的能源所新华大学北京大学还有很多地方都在研究 um, An excellent question um, So about the uh, environmental tax issues There are a lot of uh, um, institutions and agencies are working on that Including the financial department And also the um, uh, NDRC and also Tsinghua University, Peking University, Peking University and, other and other institutions. Yes. Uh, they have uh, concluded different uh, They have concluded different results. 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 They have concluded different but there was many meetings uh, convened to discuss and compare uh, these uh, their different uh, th th these uh, studies. Because the tax is related to the tax is related to the Because this will um, concern uh, uh, concern the name of the tax and the the the, the, the targets of the tax. And also um, know, categories, objects, and uh, other rates, and etc. Hmm. Uh, currently, the situation is about to say, we are preparing. As I said, from 2013, we are starting to sell, and we are starting to sell. As I said earlier, um, by 2013, um, the tax will be levied, but we will start um, with a lower rate. 那么到了二零三零年前后呢，逐渐把价格提高起来。And by 2030, the tax, the rates will be increased gradually. 碳税征收上来的碳税的使用主要用在这么三个方面，一个是节能领域，节能领域的投资；第二个是新技术的开发。The usage of the tax includes, uh, that would be used in the areas of energy saving. And also in the development and the exploration of new technology. And also subsidies for uh, enterprises. Uh, for companies who adopt new technology. But 目前，发改委正在组织环保部、海警部门，我们准备成立一个专家组来制定这样一个规章。The uh, regulation hasn't come out. Uh, the NDRC and the Ministry of Environmental Protection, the MEP, um, are um, we are working to uh, we are working on this. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate the question. You know, I mean, I think it's it's kind of really kind of you know interesting that we had some local Chinese local EPBs and and NGOs here who are who have you know I think it's really important to note that these people are aware of things that are starting to happen in Beijing in terms of the progressive environmental laws. And now you've reminded me too. I need to to make sure I file my taxes. That we're talking taxes. <laughs> Unfortunately, the time is really short, and I'm very I'm, I try to start on time and end on time. And I really want to thank the delegation for coming here to present, and but, but also, can we all give a special applause just for our interpreter here, who's not